welcome to Chewing the Cud. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? Here we are to bring you the latest showbiz news, things we have discovered on the internet, and of course, a life lesson. But let's say hello to the guy who, if he was in the Matrix, would take both the red and the blue pills. It's Mike. Um, yeah, because one, one pill helps you remember, and one helps you forget. So what happens if you take both? I, I, I haven't seen any of the films. You've not seen any of The Matrix? No, I know they do the slow motion -y backwards Ooh. thing. Yeah, that that's, stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. about it, really. Oh, okay. I'm, it's not, I'm not the demographic. All right, he, he dies in the end, so just spoilers. Um, I've been bumbling around the internet looking for things you may have missed, including a story about some geese. And I have some great showbiz news, including some information about soap stars who are making a bit of coin out of the Rona situation. Yeah. You can keep in touch with us on all the usual social media, at The Cud TV. Our website is at thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to us as a podcast, search for Chewing the Cud. And if you've interacted with us on social media, then cross your fingers and say, I hope it's me, as we share some of your lovely names. Lee. Did you know I can complete a Rubik's Cube? Yeah. Yeah, I can just take all the stickers off so it's all black. And it's always done. Well, that's not going to help you this time because it is time for... Game of the Week. On his way to the studio, the producer popped round to his German neighbours to return their copy of Das Kapital. He said he had to rush away, but not before he left his marks on the tall boy in the vestibule. So while he brews himself a mug of Horlicks, he's asked us to sort fact from fiction. First slide, please. So true or false, Roger Moore was born Roger Knightley. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah. My, my Roger Moore impression. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, it, what, so what was it? <laughs> <laughs> he, was... <laughs> he was born Roger Knightley. Oh, OK. I don't know. Not daily, nightly. Um, the, quite often, actors and celebrities have a different name, don't they? They have like their real name mm -hmm. and then their showbiz name. So he could well be called yeah. Roger Knightley. Exactly, because I mean, your original name was Bruce Maddox, wasn't it? Bruce Maddox? Yeah. Is that like a porn star name? <laughs> <laughs> don't, try and, don't try and get one over on me. I know what you youngsters are into. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time you've called me young. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually was his real name. Uh, yeah. I think it might have been his real name, but that defeats the object of getting a point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh! oh. <laughs> he wasn't. Was he always Roger Moore? Oh. He was always Roger Moore. Oh, well, mm. the voice is in our head talking to us there. Yeah, yeah. Not Gimme Moore, just Roger Moore. Not Gimme Moore, that's a Britney song. That's a Britney song, yeah. <laughs> Again, current. Yes. <laughs> it's 20 years old, that song. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have another one. There is a place, oh, you see, it's, it's always, <laughs> it's always about this with me. There is a place in Bavaria called Jizz. Okay. But it's not pronounced like that if it, it exists. Is. Like yeez. Yeez. No, it's... <laughs> yeez. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, Bavaria's German, isn't it? So it, it would be J-I-Z. Yes. It would be Jizz. Um, yeah, there probably is. Yeah, I think, I think there is a place yeah. called Jizz in Bavaria. Um, you've been, haven't you? Uh, well, have I, I, I've been to Jizz in Bavaria. Yeah. Well, there was that summer. Had some Jizz in Bavaria. <laughs> I don't know which one. Let's, let's see. We've had some breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there oh. isn't. Oh, disappointed. Uh, where, where is this place called Jizz, then? Does it... It doesn't exist. It's just a figment of the producer's imagination. Oh, right. I was asking to book a holiday, but no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should we see what the next one says? Yeah, we're not doing very well this week, are we? No, we're not. No. True or false? The melody for Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star was composed by Mozart. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I don't know. I don't know, but I feel a bit sleepy now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, well, we've got every single one wrong so far. I'm going to go with the melody quite possibly. Mm. Yes. Not, not the lyrics. Not the lyrics. No. <laughs> just, <laughs> just the melody, and then they were, the lyrics were added a long time ago. Later. Sometime later. Sometime later. Sometime later. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say no then. I, I think it might have been, but I'm going to say no. Let's see. Let's see if, if, if Mozart did. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um. So what I've got to do here is go away from what my gut is saying. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, okay. So none of us have got points. You've I've got, got point. one point. One point, okay. One point to me. Just by default. 
Um, <laughs> no, because no, I guessed right. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I said one thing and then you said, oh, I'm just going to go the opposite of what you said. Okay, let's bring, let's bring up another one that we will do exceedingly well on. Lego Group is the largest manufacturer of tyres in the world. It is. Is it? It is. See, I've recently watched a documentary about Lego and in none of it did they mention that they made tyres. At all. <laughs> so, because they didn't mention they made tyres. But you would think if they were, they would have mentioned, oh, well, by the way, we make loads of tyres. <laughs> 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 what they do, you know, what they do, bizarre fact, what they do is Lego that they've created mm -hmm. so that so nobody can get that um, design of Lego, they bury it in concrete mm -hmm. in the ground. Yeah. Do you need this? Yeah. All right. I'm okay. a bit of a Lego fan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. No, I don't think they make tyres. If they'd be really bad, because they'd be like, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. Well, no, they, they make little, little ones, ones for, don't they? Yeah, they have to make tires for the the all the like, oh, city stuff. Oh, so we're not talking about tires for cars. No, we're talking about just tires in general for the tiny cars and vehicles. Yeah, so we're not talking about for cars, but for well, cars. Yeah, right? Okay. Well, this is where I was getting confused because I'm like thinking that's an odd thing for them to to to, yeah. to diversify in. So yes, they do make loads of tiny wheels and cars. So you're saying yes? Yeah, they right, do. So I've already said yes, and Lisa. <laughs> yes. So shall we see? It's true! Yeah. <laughs> because how else would you get your Lego City to move? Yeah, well, that's, that's you know, now, when I thought it through, then, then it made sense. I was thinking more of, like, real cars. Yeah. Mm. Shall we get the next one? Go on, then. True or false? In 2009, Nigerian police arrested a goat on suspicion of attempted armed robbery. <laughs> Well, I know that goats can climb trees. They can. I think it might have been a ram raid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's crash on. Um, oh. I, I think it's true. You... Because in Britain, we, we, we hung a monkey thinking it was a French spy, didn't we? We hung a monkey thinking yeah, it was yeah. a French spy? When? When? In Hartlepool. When? Uh, it's during the Napoleonic Wars. Oh, right, so not recently. Not, not like last <laughs> week. <laughs> I didn't hear this on the news. <laughs> uh, yeah, but they thought it was a French spy, so I hung him. Okay. It turned out to be a monkey. Quite reasonable in those days when they no, didn't really, really know a lot about evolution. And small monkeys. <laughs> small monkeys. <laughs> look like tiny humans. Uh, but 2009, you'd pretty much know that a goat is a goat. Doesn't mean it can't commit an armed armed offence. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with no. I don't think they okay. did. Shall we see? Let's Whoop. have a look. Oh, okay. But I want details though. What, how? Well, uh, where? well, I said it was a ram rage, and you didn't believe me. Oh. <laughs> did it have a tiny little gun? A I little gun? No. no. I have no details. Okay. So shall we just shall we have a points check at this moment? Yeah. Why not? Two to Mike, one to Lee. No, no, three to me. Three to you? Three, yes. Well, it sounded like two. <laughs> <laughs> That's called cheating. <laughs> oh. Okay, so have we got time for another one? Let's look. Oh, okay. The US military has a swarm of trained killer bees, each with a sting that contains arsenic. <gasps> I think that's true, mm. because it was all about the killer hornets, wasn't it, a couple of weeks ago? Okay. That they were going to be released mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> and I know that the army has used animals in the past to do things. Unsuccessfully, mostly. Yeah. Um, but we've moved on now. <laughs> <laughs> like the Russians with the dogs. Yeah. 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's true. Okay. And that's scary. I think it's false. I don't think they're filled with arsenic. I think they might be very venomous, but I don't think they're filled with arsenic. Let's see. That's a massive wasp, though. Oh. Completely made up, apparently. Yeah, well, I can believe it, because how would you get arsenic in them? By feeding them little drinks. Of arsenic. <laughs> the highly yeah. poisonous no, but they, they wouldn't know that. They would say, oh, this is a delicious shake. <laughs> a honey shake. <laughs> right, let's just have one quick one then. Yeah, okay then. <laughs> True or false? Napoleon, Hitler, and Mussolini were all afraid of cats. Yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> what was that? It was a cat. Oh, okay. Um, I. I. I think probably. Depends what kind of cat. <laughs> 
if mm -hmm. it was just a regular kind of tabby cat, uh -huh. totally not scared. Sphinx bold cats mm -hmm. that look like a chicken waiting yeah. to go in the oven. Horrific. So I'm going to go, yes, they were. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say not. Okay, let's see. It's true! Oh, well done. Ah, so is it, I think, I think it's a... It's so I've still got four two, so four I've still two. Four two. Oh, okay. Well, I, I personally think I should get a trophy for that performance. Um, but coming up, we have this week's life lesson. <laughs> a trophy, really? Okay, well, just after the break, it's time for the showbiz with Lee. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time for us to speak to the human magpie that is Lee. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. Okay. Five for silver, six for gold, seven for secret never told. That's what you do when you see a magpie. Okay, what if you see eight? It only goes up to, to that number. Only goes up to seven. Yeah. Do you never do the thing when you see a magpie, you have to do the thing that you have to do. Good, m good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mr and Mrs Magpie, touch red. Otherwise, you're dead. No? no. Because it's just a bird flying around trying to live its life as a bird. Well, let's see, let's see how long Mike lasts before. 37 years so far. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do some show, qu quibbling on about birds. Let's talk about some showbiz. Okay. Um, Coronation Street stars have been making a little bit of coin with Corona, because oh. obviously all the soaps and programmes have been sort of halted mm -hmm. um, while, while we've been in lockdown. So, you know, they, they, they need to make a bit of money somehow. Are they starting to do porn? <laughs> Not all of them, only Ooh. some. Only some. Um, no, Cory Stars have been charging for personal videos. Not those personal <laughs> videos. Um, so literally what I've just said. <laughs> you no, know, not porn. We we're just say Coronation Street actors are not making porn videos. They're not. Um, so you can commission a variety of, of um, <laughs> not to do anything that you're thinking, um, to, to, to give you a message, a personal message. Mm -hmm. So like happy birthday, um, well done for not getting the Rona, okay. that kind of stuff. And they're making quite a lot of money out of it. So up to a hundred quid what? for a recorded message. So, um, Past stars and current stars. It's called a fan, a fan experience. Mm -hmm. um, well, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Catherine Tilsley, who played Eva Price, we've got a picture of her here. Um, oh I don't really know who she is either. Um, but she charged that the exact sum of forty-one pounds <laughs> fifty, forty-one pounds fifty, for a message of her singing "Happy Birthday." Okay. And I assume it's not just a generic. I think you, she puts your name in there. I've just yeah. got this image of her just going, <laughs> having her sing happy birthday, and then when it gets up to dear, just have a, an automatic voice in the background <laughs> yeah. saying, Fred, rubber. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you can do that. Or Anthony Cotton, he has a slightly cheaper rate. Okay. Um, so he plays Sean Tully. He charges £33.20. Where do they get these figures I don't from? know. For a time. So, you know, £33.20 a time. Um, <laughs> former EastEnders... John Partridge, who played um, the really baddie, Nasty Nick. All right, Nasty yeah. Nick, yeah. Um, he's 49, and Tracy Ann Oberman, they're also... So it's a site that you go on, uh -huh. that they register themselves, and then okay. you can choose which celebrity you so, want. Did you just say Nasty Nick was £49? No, he's 49. All oh, right, OK, he's 49. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's John Partridge. I don't, actually, is John... No, John Partridge isn't Nasty Nick. John Partridge played... Who did he play in EastEnders? I don't know. I don't watch EastEnders. I, don't, I, I know he's gay in real life. Oh, right. The, the gay one. Yeah. <laughs> Him. Um, so, yeah, you can get messages from there. You can also... This, this one would be worth it. Bill Roach, who plays Ken Barlow. Ooh, oh, Silver Fox. Um, really? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I have to say I don't. <laughs> really, no, I don't. <laughs> Although some people do. But the way you just slipped into Silver Fox there. <laughs> oh, awkward. Do you know, he's 88. I can believe it. And he's been playing Ken Barlow for 60 years. And who said there's no such thing as job security? 
He, you can get a virtual hug, a virtual hug from him for 35 quid. What's he do just to go? Mm. Hello. Oh. Like that. And hugs. Yeah. And it's, but this hasn't gone down well with a lot of, ce of the celebrities. So Sally Ann Matthews, who plays Jenny Bradley. So she's been in and out of the soap quite a lot over okay. the years. Um, she thinks she, she got into a bit of a Twitter spat with other celebrities saying, you shouldn't be charging people for this. It's not mm. really on. Um, mm. But it's not a new thing. Celebrities, you know, if you do, if you, you know, go to a concert or something, you can pay for a meet and greet mm -hmm. where you would, you know, you pay and your celebrity doesn't want to touch you and they have minders there waiting in case you do touch <laughs> them and then they drag you away. Um, so I don't know, you know. Is that a personal experience there, Liv? <laughs> <laughs> Every concert I've been to. Um, <laughs> would you pay to, to get a message from a celebrity? You see, I, I, I like the ones where they pe get a celebrity to say something slightly outrageous. Okay. So, like, the one where they got Carol Baskin to, like, wish oh. Rolf Harris a happy birthday. And... Yee, that was awkward, though, yeah, wasn't it? It was awkward, but that's the sort of, I, I would like to do that. Okay. But you wouldn't like the actress that played the 7th of 9th, or whatever it is, in the seventh Babylon 12, that you like? Seven of Nine in Voyager, which is Star Trek, which is different to Babylon 5. Okay. Did I get the actual Seven of Nine right? Sort of, yeah. Kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Her name's Jerry Ryan. Okay, would you, see, would you like, would, would not, I'm not going to buy one for you, but I'm oh. just saying, would you, would you, <laughs> no? No. No, okay. Not really. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you want a, if you want a personal message, not a personal massage, a personal message from a, a soap star, you know, go find that website and find out. I think, I think I might search for it and see if I can get them to say something a bit rude. I think they probably would know. You're more likely to get a, a, a foreign celebrity to say something who has no idea about British culture. Okay. So, let's see. Challenge accepted. Um, oh, hang on a minute. The phone, the phone is ringing. The, the celebrity phone. Yeah? Oh! John Partridge plays Christian oh. in, in, in Stenders. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, the one that was really good friends with Shirley, who was in Bad Girls. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne in Bad Girls. Yeah. yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, bit more celebrity news. So a couple of episodes ago, we were talking for some strange reason about what we would like our bodies... What, what Our bodies? Oh, What we would like to happen to our bodies when we passed on. We, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Um, and Drew Barrymore, actress, that's her in her, in her television programme um, called The Santa Clarita Diet, where she plays a zombie. OK. Um, which is quite good. Um, she has said that she would like, once she's died, her friends to take her body out for one last night out. So they want, she wants them to kidnap her body from the morgue and take them out for, for, wow. for a night out. Okay. Now, this isn't as strange as it sounds. Is Be it not? No, it's not <laughs> as strange as it sounds. Um, because her, um, her grandfather, mm. John Barrymore, who was a famous actor and, and producer, his friends did the same when he died. So his friends stole him from the morgue and they took him out for one last party. Sorry, he said John Barrymore then. I yeah. got confused with him and Michael Barrymore. Don't know. Um, well, it's different like, people. <laughs> no, that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah. So she said, she said, I would rather people be happy and cele celebratory than feel morose sadness when she dies. Okay. So take, take, take me out. She said, I think death comes to us with much morose sadness. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, but it's okay just with me if everyone can be really happy and celebratory and then have a party. Just kind of like... It yeah, really... I, get, I, get the, I get the ethos of having a party. Mm. And to celebrate the life rather than more but than But not once. dragging your rotting corpse yeah, around. Yeah, that's the bit that's... <laughs> like, got ID. I've got the birth certificate and the death certificate. Ooh. You'd have to have been sort of embalmed first, I yeah. would imagine. Now, this showbiz news will pique your interest. Oh, OK. It's about Henry Cavill. Oh, hello. Um, he's got a very geeky um, hobby. So he's really into gaming, computer gaming. Oh, and he's cool. been posting on Twitter pictures of him making his own computer from scratch. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think there was, it was the need for him to not wear sleeves. Well, I'm, I'm um, thankful that he did. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, he, this, he, so he, he has done that. He's really into um, his PC games and stuff. Oh. So he's built his own computer from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, so we were all very grateful that, for those, those photographs. Um, yes. And it got me thinking about celebrities that have other strange hobbies. Okay. Angelina Jolie, she likes to collect daggers. I mean, look at them in that picture. I don't know whether that's part of her collection. She's, or... not, she's not got knife safety there. No. 
She's holding it the wrong way. She's, it's pointed yeah. towards all it takes is a slip yeah. and she's dead. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Depp. His hobby is he likes to collect Barbies. I can believe it. That's a man after my own heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he, and he has tea time with them. Um, yeah, I can believe yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that, Johnny. Um, don't like your films, but I'll come around and play Barbies with you. <laughs> great. Um, George Lucas, the famous producer of the Star Wars. <laughs> the Star Wars. The Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just the one. <laughs> his, his, his hobby is squirrels. Not doing anything to squirrels. <laughs> it's not like a weird sexual term. Squirrels, squirreling. Oh, okay. Is it though? <laughs> Would you? Is it? I don't know. Is squirreling a sexual thing? I don't know. No, he doesn't do anything with squirrels, but he likes to keep the local squirrel population happy. So he puts food out. Um, you know, small sofas. <laughs> so he likes to keep squirrels happy by letting them have his nuts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, Eva Longoria Parker, who was in Desperate Housewives, um, her hobby is Brazilian waxing. So here she's with her busy mate, Posh. Um, she just likes to Brazilian wax people. I don't know whether she's just with done wax. I don't know whether she's just done Posh's <laughs> foof there. Um, but yeah. That's, that's don't, not. Don't a... go around to Eva's house. I was going to say, she'll have a, a wax strip on you before you know it. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have a, you've got to have a separate career in case the acting doesn't go well. Okay. Yeah, and on that note, that squirrely note, um, that's the end of the showbiz news for this week. Well, thank you, Lee. Coming up soon, we have another one of our lovely life lessons. But before that, we prepare ourselves for another jaunt into that mind. It's Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now... I have actually found out, I've been onto Urban Dictionary. Oh, dear. And squirrelling uh -huh. is actually, it's, it's the act of stuffing both of a guy's nuts in your mouth while going down on him. Oh. So, for example, I like squirrelling a guy so that my cheeks puff out and I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> Not me personally, but that is like as an example. <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, he's destroyed my enjoyment of what's it, ice cream and popping candy. Let's see what trauma he can inflict on us as we join Mike in the buzz. <laughs> Oh, there's no trauma this week. Is there not? No tra well, maybe a little, a little bit. Um, but what's your favourite thing to do with a biscuit? Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Don't play any game. Just straight in your mouth. Don't dunk. Don't play any games. Don't play any games with it. No, no. it's food. It goes in my face. You don't. You don't dunk. You don't try and no. dunk other people's brew. No, I want to dunk it in somebody else's brew. You don't. You don't play Dunking Ninja. No. <laughs> no, because you know when you dunk your biscuit in, in your brew. Yeah. You end up with flubbly bits at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you dunk it in someone else's brew. I've never heard of that. It must just be something that I do then. Yeah. Um, well, as we get closer to Christmas, McVitie's have announced that they're bringing out some new biscuits for us all. Are they? Yes. <laughs> um, we're getting gingerbread digestives. Okay. And Christmas pudding digestives. Okay. Less excited about the second one. You see, ginger is just a ginger nut. Just have a ginger nut. No, no, ginger. No, it's a digestive that's got ginger flavour to it. Okay. Because ginger nuts are quite quite tough biscuits. Does, <laughs> does it? <laughs> Does it still have chocolate on top? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would it not? Well, I don't know. I, I must admit, over over the over the lockdown period, mm -hmm. McVitie's have brought out a variety of different flavours of 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 of, of, of biscuits. Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, back um, and I wasn't angry at them for that. We really? I enjoyed. I enjoyed. There was like a pavlova one. Oh yeah. There was a toast and marmalade one. I wasn't a fan of that. Oh, there was um. Yeah. um um, cake flavoured one. A biscuit flavoured no, one. No, no, what's that, what's that cake called with the almond in it? And the jam? A bakewell tart. Yeah, a bakewell tart. A bakewell flavored. tart, yeah. right, okay. <laughs> you could just eat a bakewell tart though. Yeah, but it's, not, it's nice, it's exciting. No, because I, <laughs> <laughs> I like to pluck the cherry of a bakewell tart. Okay. Yeah, just eat the cherry. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, they'll be on shelves very, very soon. I don't think, I, yeah. 
You're not, not going I'm not that. overly keen on either of those flavours. Are you not? No. Turkey, Christmas dinner flavour. That, mm. That's wrong. A meaty biscuit. <laughs> yeah. Eggnog. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Why has eggnog made you laugh so much? I'm still thinking about a meaty biscuit. Meaty biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not a dog biscuit, a meaty biscuit? <laughs> Chipolata flavoured. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do another one, quick! <laughs> <laughs> Just keep you digging this hole for yourself. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, um, something lovely now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is about news from a zoo. Oh. Okay, in Germany. Okay. Okay, um, which is all about some elephants. Okay. A zoo just about elephants? No, no, just the story. Oh, right, okay. Elephants. Right. Um, and you know how they say that elephants never forget? Mm hmm Well, a sweet story happened when elephants were reunited. When a grandmother Aww. and a granddaughter elephant were reunited. Oh. Okay. Aww. And they held trunks and then the mum came along and joined in. Oh, that's nice. They had a little bit of a group cuddle. Oh. Which I thought was quite lovely. And it is that there's no That's it. There's, there's no, no like there's no horrific filth. there's no filth. Like a bull elephant comes in with his <laughs> massive todge out and attacks them. <laughs> no No, it's just a lovely story it's about just elephants. A lovely story Aww. about elephants. Which, nice. Which I thought would, would, would break the, the cycle of, of porn and filth that yeah. I tend to spew And is about. the next one about sex toys? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, OK. okay. No, that's lovely. I like elephants. It it's a lovely little story. Mm. Elephant you? biscuits. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> elephants and biscuits. What else could I possibly talk about this week? Um, and I do have a, another story here. Do you? Okay. OK. And this is news about a man who's been sacked from his job. OK from what he says, playing noises of geese in a meeting. Well, it turns out he's actually playing pawn. Ooh. So he, he said he's been sacked, um, he's playing a pawn video, and then in his defence he said, oh, no, it was geese, it was geese, in the middle of a council meeting with 100 other people. You see, there's many questions there, isn't there, really? Mm. One, why are you playing pawn when you're in a meeting? It was an accident. And it was accident. <laughs> it was accident, yeah. So he was holding onto his phone and he accidentally pressed something and porn started to play. Okay. We've all pocket dialed. We'll just have a pocket dialed porn. And the, the next question is I don't know if geese honking sounds like people having sex. It doesn't. Doesn't, does no. it? That's why they he kind has of like sacked. a. Wong, wong, wong. That's like a goose, isn't it? Uh huh. That doesn't sound like a sex noise. I'm not going to well, do a sex noise. <laughs> or you may have just done one. <laughs> was it geese having sex? It wasn't, wasn't geese no. having sex, no. Oh, so was he, was he told off then? Was he, he was, told off? He was sacked. He was sacked? He was sacked. <laughs> Get out! He was literally dismissed from his job. Oh. He pulled his trousers up. <laughs> said, packed his bag. <laughs> wasn't even allowed to finish what he was doing. Just wiped the surface. No, wasn't and allowed to finish. He wasn't get even out. A, just get out. Just get out. Get out, you deviant. Yeah, just nod. <laughs> <laughs> and if something catches your eye on the internet, why not share it with us? Just look for The Could TV on all your usual social media platforms. Our mailbox is positively bursting at the seams with a letter from Mrs Belinda Mycock from Cockermouth, who writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, if the product says do not use if seal is broken, how are you supposed to open it and use it? Well, oh, that's an interesting question. If, this, if the seal isn't broken... Uh... So, yeah, if the seal's broken, it says do not use if the seal is broken on packaging. OK. Yeah, so how do you use it? Because you have to break the seal to use it. Belinda, do we have to have a bit of an intervention? Because... Quite clearly, if you go in the shop and it's broken, you don't buy it. But when you go home, you can break the packaging. Speaking of packaging, I bought some Rehypnol the other day. On the side of the bottle, it says, best before date. I'll just leave that one there. Um, and that brings us to story of the week. And this is a story about a family spat. OK. okay. Now, I do enjoy it when, when families argue. To you. Yeah, because as, well, it's not my family. I get to sit back and watch the madness. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, two two sisters have taken to national press to argue. My sister stole my baby's name, and now she's furious with what I called my child. Okay, so the sister stole the baby name that her sister had planned. Yeah, and now that sister's annoyed by what she's called her child. Yeah. Okay. So what's happened is um, first sister has explained that you know these are this is my chosen child's name. Mm-hmm. 
And then the sister went, oh, that's a good name. I just happened to be pregnant and give birth first. Yes. Um, so stole the names. So out of pure spite and revenge, the first sister has said, I'm still going to name my, my child that. So now the cousins have identical names. OK, and what are these names? We, we can't share the names of the children because they've been redacted. Because, um, mm. of course, they're under 18. So they have okay. to be protected from the spat. Right. Okay. Well, I... But the, the fun thing is some of the comments that you get. OK. Yeah. Um, where we've got people saying she's an absolute a-hole and, and other people saying she's a double a-hole because not only has she said, I'm using that, the name you chose, but also for saying, why did you use that child's name? Are there nothing more important in the world going on? I know, I, <laughs> that I know that there is there is this thing in some families where siblings go, well, that's the, my name, my baby's name, and you can't have my baby's name. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a name. It's yeah. not like it's owned. No, we, I mean in our family we have family names, so we've all got a family name somewhere in our name. Oh, that's why I have so many. Oh, okay. <laughs> what what would you call your children? Um, Regina Banana Hammocks. Okay, friends reference there. Yep. Yeah, nice yep. and original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or something really like Sparkle Moon Dust <laughs> Sunrise. <laughs> I could see you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would yeah. that be a hyphenated first name or? I think they'd have to use the full thing, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm not giving you the, bestowing upon you the beauty <laughs> of that name for you to, to hyphenate it. Is that not child abuse though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Not even pretending that. No, it is. It totally yeah. is. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. They can when they get to eighteen, they can change it to something boring like Frank, Frank, or yeah. Barbara, yeah. or Lisa. No, not Lee. My name is 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 a unique. It is. It means amazing. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> Does it really mean amazing? Yeah. Are you sure about that? No, I made it up. Shall we see what Lee actually means? It's L-E-I-G-H, please. Uh, don't spelling it the L-E-E way or the L-E-A way. Because um, every time I, I type your name, I instantly get more rose in my head. In, okay. In the Lee of a bespoke... Re oh, a okay, sort of yeah. right. Yeah. It means meadow and delicate. That is me! <laughs> <laughs> a delicate meadow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aww. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for that, Mike. Yes, I am indeed a delicate meadow. After the break, we will have the next life lesson. See you after this. Welcome back. Having seen what Mike's got on his desk, I'm already concerned. It's time for this week's life lesson. Life lessons. Why has a pile of fabric concerned you? Is it because it's not the prettiest of fabric? Is it your bedding? It was bedding. It's going to become something much more exciting. Did you wash it? I washed it. Okay, yes. that's fine. Yes. Um, Stains. So this pile is for you. Okay. They are my colours. It's very. I, I thought of you when I, when I, I pulled that out of the washing basket. Um, what we're going to be doing is something called arm knitting. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to be making is a lovely scarf. Oh. Just as you know, as, as winter gets closer, we oh. need to wrap up warm. As the cold hand of death creeps on your shoulder. But that comes any time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we're going to be doing is knitting, and we're going to be doing arm knitting. Okay. Okay. Now, what I've used here is some sheets, because you can use sheets, you can use t-shirts as well. Okay. Right, you can use any chunky thread you want. So you, first of all, you need to find the end. You use underwear? If your underwear is very big, yes, you can use underwear, Lee. You want me to find the end in this pile of rags? Yeah, get the end, yeah. This end, or the one underneath? Uh, we'll, we'll go for that one. Okay, yeah, right, exactly. okay. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is cast on. Okay. Okay, and all we're going to do is literally get this to be loops around your arm. Okay. But you need a, a bit of a length first, because you need a tail. Okay, got okay. mine. And then you need to put a slip knot in it. Do you know how to do a slip knot? No. Okay. So you get you get a loop like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you cross it over. So you've got a, a whole like a donut shape. Yeah. Yeah. And then you stick you, you grab up the other end and pull it through. Okay. Like that. 
And you know it's a slip nut because it'll slip about. Oh, mine doesn't. Mine didn't do that. <laughs> that bodes well. <laughs> so you just so right. Do it again. Do so it, do it again. again. Show okay. me again. Here you go. You make a loop. A loop. Okay. So I've made a loop. Yeah. So you, you cross it over like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you pull the tail end through. Like that. So through the loop. I t <laughs> <laughs> loop. All the way around. Yeah. Yeah, so you just cross it over. Yeah. Yeah. And then your tail end, you pull through, but yeah. you, you don't let it go all the way through. You need to. No, don't put. <laughs> so get your tail end through as a loop. <laughs> Mike, do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, so, like that, I like that, there we go. Whatever, <laughs> whatever voodoo it is, you do it. <laughs> yes, so if I anyone else has it. a problem with this. <laughs> you have, you're right, well done you. Okay, now you need to pop the slip knot on your, on your arm. Okay. Okay, and then you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of a gap, mm -hmm. but not, you don't want it to be too tight. Okay. Not too loose. Not too loose. Okay. Okay. Now with you. Now this is called your working arm. It is indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, working. Um, <laughs> and what you're going to do is light, light down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Grab it with your hand. Yeah. 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 Lift it. Mm-hmm. And then twist it like that. Hey. Okay. Okay. And now you put your right hand through that loop. No, no, your right hand through that loop. So your left hand, you put your hands together and put the left and put it on like that. This is tricky to learn. <laughs> Can I just go and buy a scarf? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're going to recycle my old bed sheets. <laughs> okay, so put it on the on the table. It's on the table. Do I need, am I doing it the wrong way round? Does that need to go on my left hand? It makes no difference. It doesn't make any difference. All that's going to happen is you're going to be swapping hands over. All oh, right, okay, well, I'm more comfortable with that. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, grab it with your hand. Yes. On the flat. Yeah. Twist your hand over like that. There we go. Yeah. Right. Now put your hand, your other hand underneath it. No, around the, around the back. Go around the back. Other hand. So take your left hand. Yes. Yes. Put it underneath your right hand. Yes. From behind. I have from behind. So, so like that. It's not doing what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> Just yeah. yeah okay. I let go of it. There we go. Just like that. And you're gonna you're gonna repeat that eight times. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I just look like some weird game Egyptian mummy. Yes. With... <laughs> so I've got to do that eight times. So I've got to do that eight a total of eight times. So you've got one, two. So you need to do another six. <laughs> so yeah, you enjoyed yourself there. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> This can be quite tricky to learn. It's one of these things that you see, like Kirsty Allsop doing. It is indeed one and of them. And then she's going to be like, I made a marvellous um, three-piece suite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I've watched quite a few American teens do this. Three, four, five, and if I had to hear the word cinch one more cinch. time, I was going to go, yeah, because instead of going, make it, make it a little bit loose, but put it through. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> there you go, Lee. See if you managed to do it. Kind of. Kind of. We're getting there. There we go. That's very similar to what I've got here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's just yours is, yours is just a little bit loose. That's all. Which means your, your scarf will be very fluffy. Okay. Which is good. Which is okay. good. I am. <laughs> so now we actually have to start knitting. Oh, gee. <laughs> That's just getting it on your arm in the first place. <laughs> um, so the way that we knit, mm -hmm. yeah, is you take your working hand. 
Yeah. Right, work the thread and grab it with your left hand. You should have it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the first loop you have on your wrist... Yeah. ...you need to slip over. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, that's it. It's that's just it. done that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's is it. That it. And then the whole, the loop that you've now created here. Yeah. You put your other arm in. God. <laughs> now let go of the thread. Let let go of it. Just put your arm in. Yeah. Yeah. And then let go with your left hand. So you should now be slightly tied up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you need to give it a bit of a tighten, just so it's not too loose. <laughs> And then we're going to repeat that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just going <laughs> to. I'm just going to watch. Yeah. Just You're going to like just watch that. me do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. look, that isn't a scarf. Look, that it's isn't a scarf. <laughs> that the is start just of rags. A scarf. <laughs> it's the start of a scarf, Lee. Okay. You're... I'm going to. I'm going to watch you because. You're going to watch me do um, it. I'm, I'm clearly incapable. <laughs> it's just a series of slip knots. Of hand-eye coordination. <laughs> I, I could I, I could make a coat out of this or something. <laughs> there you go. You can make a what? A coat or a coat. Why is there a leaf in it? <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a brown dead leaf <laughs> in your it's bedding? <laughs> <laughs> That's how long it's been. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown trees. I'm gonna that shake it and moths will come out. Yeah. No, you just keep going. Would you like to learn how to cast off? No, just no. no. <laughs> I'm quite happy like this. To be fair, cast off. Mm -hmm. All we're going to do is we're going to pop, we're going to do the same thing again with the loops, yeah? Uh-huh. Only we're going to do it twice. Okay, and then when you've got your two loops, like that, the first loop you have on comes off. So we're just basically re-knitting, and then pulling the last loop off. You're not enamoured by arm knitting, are you? I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm not a fan. You're not a fan? No. So if somebody would make one, that would be deli delightful. Well, this is how you get... get I don't want to make it. You don't want to make <laughs> it. You don't want to learn a new skill. No. You don't want to learn a life lesson. No. No. Just get someone else to do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that one goes over that way. That one goes over that way. And would. And then if it kept going, you'd end up with... A lovely scarf. Oh, yeah. It's all knitted. See? Yeah, yeah, it's great. We've come to the end of the show for now. You can always find us on the internet. Just search for The Could TV on social media. The TV for our website. And while you're there, have a look at our support section for exclusive clips. Now, like the last Pringle stuck at the bottom of his tube, we have just enough time to reach in and pull it out for a photo of the week, which comes from Mr. Autobot Hoover, who says... Yo, Cutsters. I thought I'd get my trouser snake out for you to see. It's a whopper, isn't it? Cheers. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. That is an impressive trouser snake. So one that's spinning in your face, do oh, you? Oh, no, you wouldn't. No. no. Anyway, stay safe, make lots of scarves, and we will see you again next time. Bye! Bye.